It's winter here in LA. Yes, winter, not winter, because all we get is wind. So sorry for the background noise. So what we have here today is the Cadex Tarsier V2 4K HD, whatever the newest version is, and the Runcam Hybrid. And so first I'd point out that Cadex was the first company, I believe, to come up with this dual camera concept of having one camera for the HD feed and one camera for the FPV feed. And that's a pretty novel concept and it worked pretty well for this particular product. This is Runcam's variation of that. And uh, as you'll see a little bit later on, I don't understand why they have two lenses, but hey, we'll talk about it a little bit later. The physical differences between these two are that one has one board, the Runcam has one board, while the Tarsier has two boards. And that's a pretty nice difference between them because having one board is definitely a whole lot easier to stuff into any build at all. The board sizes are the same as well. Moving on to the user experience of these cameras, as we know, the Tarsier's user experience is absolutely awful, and it's awful for one primary reason. I've used over a dozen of these things, and I still can't remember the, the password to the Wi-Fi, and I don't even know how to get the Wi-Fi to turn on reliably. I just, just can't understand why they went with such an awful user experience. The app itself is not that fantastic either, and I still think some of the settings in the app are a little funky, where it doesn't actually do what it says it does, like original setting of the, the wide field of view or the super wide field of view. And in this version of the camera, there's also no more uh, hyper smooth or any kind of smoothing effect to the camera. So there's no way to kind of constrict your field of view with that anymore, which is great because nobody ever used that anyways. The user experience of the, of the run cam, on the other hand, is phenomenal, just fantastic. And when I first took it out of the box, I was, I was pretty upset because I looked at the instructions online and it wanted me to wire up my RX and TX to my flight controller to a UR and then go into beta flight and set the settings and set up. It's just way too much work for me. But then I read into the uh, product description page a little bit further and I saw that they actually have an app that generates a QR code, which you hold in front of the lens and you can set all the settings with that, which is excellent because it works fantastic, just unbelievably well. I do think that TBS was the first one to kind of start using that concept in their VTXs, I think, for like races. You can just hold a QR code in front of all the, all the quads and it just sets all the settings. I think, I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, it works really great in this setup. It just phenomenal in the setup. The other, other physical difference is that the Tarsier is a little bit smaller. I didn't take it out of here to show you, but you can definitely tell that the lens apparatus on the, the Runcam hybrid is definitely a little bit bigger. One other physical difference is that the Tarsier comes with an ND filter, which I don't know why it goes over the H, the, sorry, the FPV camera also, but hey, you get an ND filter and it is very, very important. And as you're viewing this video, <clears throat> I would point out that I strapped the Tarsier camera to the GoPro mount and just taped it to the top. And the jello that you're seeing is primarily from that. Now the Tarsier camera does seem like it's a little bit more prone to jello, but it does come with that ND filter, which does help pretty much completely. And so it's a kind of a moot point and sorry that you see jello in the footage. I also was planning on putting a lot more effort into this review, but as you'll see in a bit, I don't see a point because it, the, you'll see. Anyways, I've put both of these cameras through the worst case scenario. It is super ultra bright where I'm flying. It's got dark shadows, really bright brights. The sky is really bright. And I'm flying them on a quad that does not perform very well. Now, I am personally flying through the FPV view of the Runcam Hybrid, and that's the reason why I have the recording of the Hybrid and not of the Tarsier. I was gonna put more effort into it to record the Tarsier also at the same time, but when I used the Nano Hybrid, I was like, well, this is not, there's no point in that because the FPV view of the Nano Hybrid, or the, sorry, not Nano Hybrid, the FPV view of the Hybrid is just horrendously bad. It is probably the very worst FPV view I have ever seen on any FPV camera ever. So, so there you have it. I don't understand why that they have two cameras on here because j j there's the, the whole point of having the second FPV camera is so that you have a better FPV view. But the original split cameras had a better FPV view than this hybrid camera. So maybe I got a broken one, I don't know. But the view is extremely grainy, extremely low contrast and dim, very, very dim. If you have an OLED goggle, OLED screen goggle, not the HDO, if you have the SkyZone OLED screen goggle, those screens are actually super bright and you can fire them up ultra bright and blind your eyes. 
and that can compensate for the dimness of the video. But the other thing I would point out is that I don't think that this is a killer for the product because you're probably not going to be using these cameras in a quad that you're going to be pushing to the absolute brink of your limits. You're probably going to be using them in a quad that you're kind of cruising around, maybe indoors, getting close to stuff, and you're not going to be flying at the edge of your limits. You're going to be flying well within your limits. Sure, you might bump stuff and crash, but I don't think having the gloriously beautiful view of the Tarsier is going to make a massive difference other than you personally just not liking that you have to deal with this awful FPV view while you're flying. And as we've seen over and over and over again in previous videos, the H, the, sorry, the FPV view from the Tarsier is absolutely fantastic. It is number two right after the Micro Eagle in my mind for H, for FPV cameras. It's beautiful. I really wish that they would squeeze it into a nano camera somehow, but they're still, they, so many people have told them, but they just don't listen. I have told them over and over again, and so maybe it's gonna turn into a product, but hopefully it also has good quality control because they have had quality control issues as of late. Moving on to the actual HD view, I did watch the comparison or review video from uh, Albert Kim that had Umagod in it where they viewed both, both of the views of the HD, and they actually, I think they preferred the run cam more because I had a warmer view. Well, in my cameras, I actually have a warmer picture in the Tarsier, which I prefer, but honestly, it doesn't make a difference because you can just edit that in post. Where both of these cameras are not that fantastic is that they don't have very good dynamic range. They don't have very good colors. They don't have very good uh, contrast. There isn't a lot of detail or information there to work with. After and post processing, you can't really pull the video around. You can't really do too much with it. Neither one has a, a lot of artifacting, which is great, and both of them are pretty crisp, but that's kind of the only good part. You really don't need 4K. The 1080p is pretty much the same as the 4K. You do get a little bit more pixels to work with with the 4K, but it, the actual picture view doesn't look any better with the 4K. And that's kind of the other reason why I didn't see a point in putting a lot more effort into this review, because the HD view of these two cameras is not that different. They are both not very good in my opinion, and I am being kind of a snob here and being very nitpicky, but in my opinion, the field of view of both these cameras is identical and they're not, it's not wide enough for my taste. The color accuracy is not very good. The um, dynamic range is not very good. The contrast is not very good. The actual bit rate is high on the Tarsier, but it doesn't actually give you a whole lot of information to work with in post-processing. But I don't know if that really makes a whole lot of difference these days because I think the vast majority of people are consuming these video content on smaller screens so you're not going to be blasting these things full screen on a TV or a computer monitor so much anymore and I do think it's totally fine for Instagram and Facebook and that kind of stuff. Anyways, I think that's enough information about both of these cameras. At this point, choose the one you want if you're looking for a hybrid type camera. If I had the choice, I... I would re reluctantly go with the Tarsier if I could squeeze it into my build just because the FPV view is so much better. But they're both pretty similar. And the user experience of the run cam is so much better, But the, and there's only one board. Choose whichever one you want. The other thing I want to point out is the baby turtle, which I'll show here flying on the twig, which is the quad from Iashin. It flies absolutely awful. All these quads in this video fly awful. <laughs> The twig has the baby turtle on it, and in my opinion, I think the baby turtle looks better than both these cameras. Even though it's only 1080p, the field of view of the lens is wider, and that's the primary difference. It, the picture looks pretty much the same, and that in post-processing, they all look very, very similar. I really, I couldn't tell the difference between any of these cameras in post-processing on a small view, unless I started messing with the video, then I could tell the difference. But the baby turtle has a really nice field of view for what it is, a baby turtle. It's just a smaller version. The FPV view is unfortunately not as nice as the Tarsier, but it is a whole lot nicer than the hybrid camera. So there you have it. I'll review the um, I'll review the baby turtle against the Runcam Nano split, but the Runcam Nano split that I have doesn't fit a whoop platform. It fits a 20 by 20 platform, so I have to run them on different quads, which is frustrating and I just burnt out one of the VTXs on my toothpick because the Happy Model VTX is Diamond VTX is not very good. Anyways, carry on. I hope this was helpful and informational. <laughs> Please pause. Bye-bye.